This is a natural gas storage facility in Italy. In the, in the municipality where I live, I indicated them the possible places where leaks could, uh, could come from. At first glance, it looks like a regular industrial building, but an infrared camera reveals something else. And after 30 minutes, they called me and they told me, please come, come back here because you have to see. And I saw the big leakages at this facility and there was... That smoke is methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, and it's a problem. Looking at other industrial sites all across Europe reveals the same thing. Invisible smoke coming out of buildings, pipelines, and tanks. Tackling these emissions hidden in plain sight might be the easiest step we can take to reduce global warming. This is the Earth's atmosphere. It's composed mostly of two gases, nitrogen and oxygen. But other gases are present in small quantities, like carbon dioxide and methane. They're also known as greenhouse gases because they help keep heat inside the atmosphere and they're the main cause behind global warming. Even in small quantities, they can have a large impact on the Earth's climate. The most famous of the two is carbon dioxide. And so far, it's received the most attention. This is Nicola Armaroli. Initially, the focus was on carbon dioxide, of course, because it is strictly related to the emissions by, obtained by burning fossil fuels. As the investigations started to focus on the many causes of, of, of climate change, uh, methane came as the second culprit. But while there's 200 times less methane than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, its impact is still very significant. It reflects 25 to 80 times more heat, depending on how long it's been in the atmosphere, and can also turn into harmful pollutants. A large portion of those emissions are produced naturally from swamps or decomposing plants and animals, which means there's always been some methane in the atmosphere. But human activity in the form of agriculture, waste, and fossil fuels have tripled methane emissions since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. While fossil fuels represent only a fraction of methane emissions, on one aspect, they're very different. So what characterizes the emission from the oil and gas industry is their concentration. It is uh, concentrated in uh, a few sites, even though by in absolute terms, they are probably not the, the biggest one. They are the most concentrated. And for this reason, they are the easiest to, 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 to be controlled. The challenge with methane emissions is that while some of the leaks are accidental, with outdated infrastructure, others are a result of companies venting natural gas intentionally. This is James Torito. He's been driving around monitoring methane leaks at sites across Europe. This includes sites like transmission compressor stations, underground storage facilities, liquidified natural gas terminals, and most of the sites that I visited have leaks. In the past two years, the technology for monitoring methane has improved significantly. Thanks to the EU's Earth monitoring satellite Copernicus, it's now possible to track leaks from space. But while satellite technology allows monitoring of bigger leaks at production sites like this one detected in June 2021 in Russia, or this one in the United States, smaller ones often remain unnoticed or even ignored. Uh, we can't just rely on satellites because a lot of what I've been documenting is not visible on satellites. As you can see from my videos, there are leaks everywhere. It takes infrared cameras to increase monitoring at a local level. Tackling methane emissions has become a priority for the European Union, which unveiled its methane strategy as part of the European Green Deal to implement known solutions. That means monitoring infrastructure, plugging leaks, and fixing pipelines like the one James has been documenting. But there's one problem. The methane emissions taking place in the EU are only the tip of the iceberg. While fossil fuels account for only a fraction of the EU's total methane emissions, 75 to 90% of all its emissions happen outside of its borders when it's transported or extracted. And the, the gas pipelines that, that, that bring gas to Europe uh, are decades old uh, and they are coming from northern Siberia down to southern Europe like in Italy. That means that resolving this problem is not something that can only happen within the European Union. Considering that natural gas and oil production are still set to increase, with peak oil, the year when most oil ever will be extracted, is expected to take place in 2027, and peak gas somewhere in 2037, tackling this problem is as urgent as ever. According to this report, by the United Nations, 
reducing methane emissions by 40% would help shave off 0.3 degrees off the planet's temperature. The European Union, which is the world's biggest buyer of natural gas, combined with its satellite monitoring tools, means that it has an important role to play. This means international monitoring and potentially putting pressure on suppliers to reduce their own emissions. If this problem is properly addressed and methane emissions fall, it could have some big effect on the climate. Methane's 12-year lifespan means that if you reduce or stop emissions, it can have a rapid effect on how much of it is in the atmosphere. Tackling these emissions coming from fossil fuels is only the first step in tackling other methane emissions and the broader issue of climate change. But it's one that can readily be solved and have an impact on a time frame short enough to make a difference.